There's great power in prayer, even more in group prayer. This is the foundation of the Unity Movement and our church. Our prayer ministry has close to over 100 active participants supporting our community and the world. There's great synergy in us coming together consistently. Beyond our own personal experience with prayer, there's so much evidence to its impact on the collective consciousness. The Maharishi effect shows that if 1% of the population meditates, it produces measurable improvements in the quality of life for the whole population. The world is going through a lot of change. We must go to the unchanging realm of the divine and help co-create the best outcome for the most impactful event taking place. Let's join together to support this cause. Thank you for joining us. Your presence, your consciousness is summoned for humanity at this time. There's great power in prayer, even more in group prayer. This is the foundation of the Unity Movement and our church. Our prayer ministry has close to over 100 active participants supporting our community and the world. There's great synergy in us coming together consistently. Beyond our own personal experience with prayer, there's so much evidence to its impact on the collective consciousness. The Maharishi effect shows that if 1% of the population meditates, it produces measurable improvements in the quality of life for the whole population. The world is going through a lot of change. We must go to the unchanging realm of the divine and help co-create the best outcome for the most impactful event taking place. Let's join together to support this cause. 
Thank you for joining us. Your presence, your consciousness is summoned for humanity at this time. Hey, what's up, Unity? Good morning. We're glad to see everyone here with us, and we're going to give a special shout out to all the folks watching us online. We're so glad you're tuning in. We're so, I'm just so happy to be a part of this community and all the wonderful creativity and diversity that goes on here, and we're going to be hearing uh, more about some creativity today with one of our own, and uh, it's going to be a great service. So uh, this first song here, we're hopefully going to lift you up out of your seats, maybe all the way up into the sky. So take that ride with us. I used to think that I could not go And life was nothing but an awful song But now I know the meaning of true love I'm leaning on the everlasting heart I can see it, then I can do it, if I just believe it, there is nothing to it, I believe I can fly, I believe I can touch the sky, I think about it every night and day, I spread my wings and fly away. I believe I can soar I see me running through that open door I believe I can fly I believe I can fly I believe I can fly See, I was on the verge of breaking down Sometimes the silence can seem so loud There are miracles in life I must achieve But first I know it starts inside of me If I can see it, then I know I can be it. If I just believe it, there's nothing to it. And I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. I think about it every night and day. I spread my wings and fly away. I believe I can soar I see me running through that open door I believe I can fly I believe I can fly Oh, I believe I can fly Ooh, cause I believe in me Oh I can see it, then I can do it, if I just believe it, there's nothing to it, 
I believe I can fly. I believe I can touch the sky. I think about it every night and day. Spread my wings and fly away. I believe I can soar. I see me running through that open door. I believe I can fly. I believe I can fly. I believe if I just spread my wings, I can fly. I believe I can fly. I believe I can fly. I believe I can fly. go I would choose peace and love and so and so and so and so and so and so if I could choose how life would be I'd choose that you and I'd be free we'd be free we'd be free if I could paint the way things are I'd paint perspective near and far, near and far, near and far. Cause who we are is who we are, and that's the way it ought to be. Every soul is like a star that wants to shine and to be free. If I could make all understand, if I could place we hand in hand, Hand in hand, understand. If, if I could make all understand, we'd place we hand in hand, hand in hand. We'd all understand. If I could write the whole darn truth, I would have started in my youth, in my youth. In my youth Oh, what we could do If we could do the things we can Oh, what we could be If we could come to understand We can if we will Behold miracles Still if we know from the start we can't control from the heart, from the heart, from the heart. If I decided what was real, if I could guide a soul to feel, to feel compassion, would be in fashion.
still If we know from the start We can't control from the heart We can, if we will Behold miracles Still if we know from the start We can control from the heart From the heart From the heart If I decided what was real If I could guide a soul to feel To feel compassion Would be in fashion Thank you, thank you, and welcome to Unity. And please join us now in welcoming the Spirit of Christ into this place. Welcome into this place. Welcome into this open vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands and we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your name. Welcome into this place. Welcome into this open vessel. You desire to abide in the praises of your people. So we lift our hands and we lift our hearts as we offer up this praise unto your name. we turn within to the sacred holy space of prayer we align our thoughts and feelings with the oneness of spirit and our own divinity we open our hearts to the light and the love of God so we can hear see and know more clearly the truth of our being we don't always know why things happen for the mystery of life doesn't always reveal itself in ways we can readily understand. But we do know we have dominion over our thoughts and how we react to life's experiences. By focusing on the unlimited potential and infinite possibilities through spirit, we remain clear vessels to receive God's goodness, blessing, and guidance. Our attention and intention drive how we experience all of life. In partnership with Spirit, we say yes to divine will and remain in the flow of life, accepting our experiences, obstacles, and challenges with God's grace. May the grace of the divine be felt, heard, and known by every name in this prayer box, 
and all those unnamed. Resting in the assurance that spirit is always companioning us, we give thanks that whatever comes into our lives is always unfolding for our highest and our best good. And so we let it be. Amen. Again, meditate. Sit upright. You can remain comfortable sitting with your back off of the back of your chair and your feet supported on the floor or foot rest. Please do so. Now, using the power of thought, of a time when you said something harmful. What you said was meant to push their button. Now imagine the state of mind that you were in. Calm your breathing and remind yourself that this is only a memory. In many cases, we say these things out of anger, frustration, or we feel trapped. What you said to them may or may not have been true to you, but in the end, you planted a seed in their consciousness. Take a moment and silently ask for forgiveness for this act. Now, think of a time that someone said something to you that was meant to push your buttons offend, or hurt you. Calm your breathing and remind yourself that this is only a memory. In many cases, that person said what they said out of anger, frustration, or they felt trapped. Now find the part of what they said that was true and sit with that for a moment. For example, maybe they called you a jerk. Well, have you ever acted in this way? If so, forgive yourself for your action at that point in time and forgive the person who said what they said. 
out of anger, frustration, or a feeling of being trapped. Find the part of the statement and then now time delimit it and replace it in your memory now with a similar but more accurate statement. For example, maybe they said something like, you won't amount to anything. Now modify that statement, time delimited. In this way, you will not likely reach your true potential if you squander your resources and never take the time to have a personal relationship with the divine. Imagine these new words now coming from that person. Say it several times over and sit with this new statement and memory. As we move towards stillness, find the negative seeds that were planted in your consciousness and uproot them. Offer the uprooted seeds to the divine. For the divine has the infinite capacity to remain faithful and steady, always conspiring for our highest good, no matter what offerings we show up with. In the stillness, allow your breath to be intentional, effortless, and smooth as we move into the stillness.
us this day our daily bread you said you would supply all my needs according to your riches i have but to ask and i shall receive to go from here and share this love you gave to me to show someone who's lost and help them find their way the way to truth and faith so they can be free like me free like me lord we are your love lord we are your peace Lord, we are your joy this day, this day. Well, our next speaker that's a guest here for today is not really a guest. He's one of our own. Ruben Schuler, in, in addition to his professional life, has been an active member of this community for many, many years. He's been part of the prayer ministry with the prayer, being a prayer chaplain and an extended care team member. He's been the president of our board of trustees here at Unity, and he's facilitated several classes and meditation, as you've heard today. Ruben has been studying for quite some time in the ancient wisdom tradition of Kriya Yoga, He's an initiate, and he will soon be ordained. So today, he's going to speak to us about the third unity principle I created. Ruben, we welcome you back up here. Thank you so much, Reverend Mimi. And to everyone, happy National Avocado Day. Today, we will be talking about all of the wonderful benefits of that magical fruit, the avocado. <laughs> no? Oh, oh, okay, wait. All right. Wrong, right day, wrong talk. My apologies. This pre-retirement is keeping me much busier than I had anticipated. Maybe I should go back to being an IT manager full time. Nah. Yeah. This day, July 31st, in this communion of good, no, of very good, that's still not good enough, of great people, we will explore the subject or field, the source of our harvest that we refer to as the mind. The third unity principle speaks to this. It states, I think, thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. Okay, hang on. Before we move forward with the, our discussion of the third principle, let's look back at our first two principles. One, God is. There is only one presence and one power, God the good. Two, I am. Please repeat after me. Remember this from last week? And that includes those of you who that are joining us on the live stream online. I want you to say this too with us. Repeat after me. I am a divine spark. I, am a divine spark. I, can, do all I can do all things. 
I can do everything. I can do anything. Excellent. All right. So now we're ready to discuss the third principle. I think. I think. <laughs> okay, specifically, thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. So what does this really mean? Our thoughts have creative power to influence events and to determine experiences. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. Thoughts produce. Thoughts procreate. And our thoughts, progenies, are our life experiences. So wait a minute. Thoughts create? Thoughts produce? As a boy growing up in the Baptist church, I was taught that God creates. These concepts seemed to be at odds with one another. Or were they? The logic dictates that in order for both to be true, God, or at least some aspect of God, must be thought. It was at this time that I had an epiphany. To go back to the beginning. To find the answer. So I did. I went back. I went all the way back to the beginning. So, from the Gospel of John. This is from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. It's coming, it's coming, don't worry. In the beginning, oh, that's, cha that's John chapter 3, so one more chapter. In the beginning, was the Word. And the Word was with God. Okay. And the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through all things were made, through all things, through Him all things were made, and without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So then, my next thought was, I thought this Bible verse was about Jesus, and not thought. Why am I being led here? Where is Spirit leading me? Here's what I uncovered. John's use of the word to describe Christ was a term understood by the culture of that time. In St. John's time, the word described an eternal principle. It is translated from the Greek word Logos. Now, without totally boring you with an etymology lecture, let me just say this. Ancient Greek philosophers used the term logos in different ways. Under Hellenistic Judaism, Philo, who lived from about 20 years before the birth of Jesus to about 50 years after the birth, adopted the term into Jewish philosophy. Philo identified the Logos through all things that were made as divine. The Logos was called by Philo the firstborn of God. In John's time, and I do imagine that John had this philosopher's Scrolls in his library, the word was used to describe the eternal principle 
that is the rational mind or the logic of which God creates and orders all things. This is also synonymous in John's writing with Son of God, the firstborn of God, and the Christ. In John's writings and in, in, the, in the Gospels. But there was one more thing that I was stuck on. Okay? Why in this Bible passage did St. John use he to describe Christ? to describe the Christ's presence, the Word? Well, a short answer turns out to be he did not. You see, in his time in Greek, nouns are either masculine, feminine, or neuter, genderless. When translated to English, the scribes at that time, were pressured by politicians and religious leaders to use he. A more accurate translation today would be the use of the word it or they, the genderless descriptor. So there you have it. But with this understanding, I still wasn't completely satisfied. (laughs) I wanted another source because it's more than nice to have more than one source. It's prudent when attempting to confirm correct knowledge. I found the answer in the ancient Vedas, which were written from a period of about 600 years BCE. Started a little bit further back, but public versions about 600 years before, 600 years BCE. St. John's declaration echoes an eternal truth resonating in various passages of the ancient Vedas. The word called vak, spelled V-A-K in the Vedas, was with God, the Father Creator, in the beginning of creation when nothing else existed. And that by the Word were made all things. And that the Word is itself God. Well, with the second source, I began to wake up. And I found a third source in the Nagamati Scrolls and another Gospel of John, many of which were destroyed in a great burning. Arguably, you might even find a fourth choice, uh, a fourth uh, in the Old Testament. And wisdom is described as being with God in the beginning. Thoughts as the word, as used in this passage and in the passage of time, do indeed create. Hmm. But this means if I have thought and I create, I must somehow be part of the Word. Right? The purpose of this proclamation, its power, its empowering intent, is so that the readers might share in fellowship, a true fellowship, which is with the Father and the Son, also known as the Word. The purpose is that we might share in fellowship, true fellowship, which is with the Father and the Son. This is the remembrance that Jesus is summoning us to every time we take in bread have a divine thought or idea. And we drink wine living in the flow of life. Jesus is inviting us to think and live as the Word. 
Wow. Now that's powerful. Thoughts held in mind produce after their kind. Now we're ready for the Gospel of John chapter 3. From verses 16 through 21. For God so loved... Sorry. I love this passage. For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that everyone who believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn it but to save the world through Him. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. And this is the, and this is the verdict. The light has come into the world. But men love the darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever practices the truth comes into the light, so that it may be seen clearly that what he has done has been accomplished in God. In God. My father was a Baptist pastor. I spent a lot of time in church, <laughs> and I was taught many lessons. So many lessons, many of which I truly only gained understanding of after he had passed. I was always curious about Jesus, the Word, and the Son of God and what appeared to me to be obvious discrepancies. Correct perception was found by way of my teachers, which is inclusive of my father and my mother. And there's my beautiful mother, a lovely octogenarian, moving into nonagenarianship soon, sitting next to my lovely wife, from my teachers, inference, and grace. These three helped me to overcome a great deal of ignorance and to think with correct perception. Here's what Paramahansa Yogananda had to say about this Bible passage. I am quoting him now as I am part of the spiritual lineage of these Kriya Yogis and whose explanation I cannot put more clearly. What Jesus meant was that whoever does not realize himself as one with the universal Christ consciousness is condemned to live and think as a struggling mortal, delimited by sensory boundaries because he has essentially disunited himself from the eternal principle of life. Jesus never referred to his Son of Man consciousness or his body as the only Savior throughout all time. Abraham and many others were saved even before Jesus, the man, was born. It is a metaphysical error to speak of the historical person of Jesus as the only Savior. It is the Christ intelligence that is the universal redeemer. Wow. That inaccurate perception was keeping me from realizing my true divine nature by limiting my connection with the Christ consciousness. 
Over time, my friends, perception becomes belief. And belief becomes fact. This is powerful. Through this, we can realize, understand, and keep in mind that our own personal mind, consisting of our personal beliefs and thoughts, is what gives form to the divine within us. Our individualized mind is what gives form to the divine within us. The essence of being within us is shaped, for better or for worse, by our beliefs and thoughts, many of which we're not consciously aware of. The essence of our being within us is shaped by our beliefs and thoughts, many of which we are not consciously aware. At any moment, we may choose to become aware of these beliefs. We may choose to be aware of how our thoughts are shaping the essence of our being. We must choose to be aware of how our thoughts are shaping the essence of our beingness. This consciousness is one of our principles. Why is this so important? Why is it at our faith's core? Well, it's important because there's a wonderful mystical law. Wonderful mystical law of nature says there are three things that we crave most in life. Happiness, freedom, and peace of mind. Happiness, freedom, and peace of mind are always attained by giving them away. Giving them to someone else. By giving them to others. As carriers of the Christ light, is not that what Jesus the Christ teaches? Jesus showed us how to be how to live and be happy, free, and at peace by giving those exact things away to others, especially those who were different than he. However, if we do not have peace of mind ourselves, how can we have it to give away? Therefore, possessing the right conscience by way of Christ consciousness the capital C, is paramount to our practice. To reach that state, we must discern thoughts by refining our beliefs. In order to reach that state, we must discern thoughts by refining our beliefs. Attaining peace of mind takes practice. Therefore, the third unity principle must be foundational in our faith every day. When I was working as a professional for a Fortune 500 company with aspirations of going into management, I was encouraged to read the book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. By Stephen Covey. I see a lot of heads nodding. They're like, yeah, I got that talk. I got that talk. <laughs> Here's what he states. Conscience is the endowment that senses our congruence or disparity with correct principles and lifts us, and lifts us towards them when it's in shape. Training and educating the conscience, however, requires even greater concentration, more balanced discipline, more consistently honest living. It requires regular feasting on inspiring literature, thinking noble thoughts, and above all, living in harmony with its still small voice. 
just as junk food and lack of exercise can ruin an athlete's condition, those things that are obscene, crude, or pornographic can breed an inner darkness that numbs our higher sensibilities and substitutes the social conscience of, will I be found out? Or the natural or divine conscience of what is right and wrong. My friends, this leads to the right alignment of that small voice from spirit on high. I of the tiger. Okay, sir. This is not a bad song. Okay. The small voice from spirit on the highest, mind creating thoughts, and body, which moves us through this human experience. Now, since I've used the Bible a great deal during this talk, I would like to leave you with one final thought. And, of course, one final Bible verse. <laughs> My final thought is, Connecting with Christ, not the Bible, is God's living and active word that brings life. From John 5.39, you do not have his word living in you because you do not believe in the one he sent. You study the scriptures because you think you have eternal life in them. Yet, they testify of the Christ. And you are not willing to experience the Christ, present tense, so that you may have life. Now you know the reasoning for the adaptation of this principle in our worship and our daily practices. So, who's ready to celebrate with avocado toast or guacamole or nachos smothered with guacamole? Some discounts out there today, I heard. But seriously, it is also your day. This is the day that the Lord has made for you to rejoice in. As you do so, remember, your thoughts have creative power to influence events and determine experiences. You create life experiences through your way of thinking. So here are some last words borrowed, some words, last words of advice borrowed from Paramahanta Yogananda. My teacher, Samuel Sassu, teacher, or Eugene Davis, teacher. Here's what Yogananda Ji said. Read a little, Meditate more. Think of God all the time. Let us pray. As we pray, I'd like to invite you to hear these words as if they were your own. I am a life-giving spirit made in the image and likeness of God, forever expanding and expressing the goodness that I am. I thrive, I flourish, and I am positively successful in all ways. I am a blessing to my world and I continually manifest my divine qualities to fill needs and heal hurts. I am the master of my world and I have dominion over the circumstances in my life. I let it be 
and it is so. Amen. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Reuben. You know, I've been reading, um, you may be seated. I've been reading The Untethered, um, Living Untethered by Michael Singer. It's his newest book. And a lot of the concepts that you talked about today are in there. So if you all want to he hear more about that, it's actually going to be our book study book in the oh. fall. So you're right on target. Yes, thank you. So now let's give him our unity blessing. And yes, sorry, stand again. <laughs> All right. From our hearts, from our deep hearts, we say together, we love you, we bless you, we appreciate you, and we behold the Christ in you. Thank you again, Reuben. can take all you need, no mistakes of greed, what you give is what you're worth to the world, you can give your time, share a smile in life, cause a little bit of love goes a long way you can love anything write a song and sing you can build yourself a life of loving grace what would you build what would you give what would it take what would it take what would you build? What would you build in love and grace? You can build your dreams with just an ounce of love, it seems. You just practice what you wish and it will be. You gotta practice or meditate. Folding clothes always works great. You can learn to be at one with what you do. Oh, you gotta learn, for goodness sake. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. You can build yourself a life of love and grace. What would you give? What would you give? What would it take? What would it take? What would you build? What would you build? In love and grace. Yeah, what would you give? What would you give? What would it take? What would it take? What would you build? What would you build? In love and grace. Well, next week will be the fourth principle, and the fourth principle is prayer and meditation. And as you all know, that's my passion. So you will get to hear me one more time next week. <laughs> Each week, we are highlighting a volunteer team and showing our appreciation and also as a way for you to learn more about what these volunteer groups do. So this week, we'd like to uh, highlight the welcome team and the greeters. So will you please stand?
this is not all of them, but this is a part of them. But these loving and warm faces greet congregants and guests every single Sunday. You can feel their light, their welcoming light actually um, brings and connects a sense of community and inclusiveness to our community. So they are a part of the heart of our community. They're also available to answer your questions, to hand out information, to assist the, anybody that needs to know where to go or what do I do. They're just, they do all kinds of wonderful things. So we want to say thank you, thank you so much to all of you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Mike Domino, and you've probably seen me up here with, singing with the choir, uh, and I'm also on the board of trustees. Uh, I, I want to make a short announcement, and that's that next week is Sanctuary Sunday. So it's the first Sunday of the month. So all students except for nursery and preschool uh, will be here. Will the greeters please come forward to bless our gifts? While they're coming forward, I have to tell you that 24 years ago to this exact day, my family sent me down the road to the Piggly Wiggly Church, which was Unity Church of Raleigh, to kind of scope out what is this unity all about. And uh, Reuben, I, I grew up Catholic, and in that tradition, we were taught that God was outside of us. So com coming to unity, it was refreshing to know that the Christ dwells within and that we have the power to do in our lives what we want, but we have to always remember that we have the power. So come in here. I've been so grateful to actually get a punch in the arm every Sunday singing with the choir or what, whatever uh, we have done. My family participates in the uh, consistent giving, and we have been doing it for a while. It helps our budget but it also helps UCT's budget. It's really important. So I would encourage you, if you're not already a consistent giver, to please uh, consider being, becoming one. Okay, we make donating very easy. We have several ways to donate, either in person or online at our website, unitytriangle.org. Now let's bless our gifts with the aff affirmation shown on the screen. Together. Divine love, as me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive.
wash over us. We let, we let it be. We let the love wash over us. We let, we let it be. We let, we let the love wash over us. We let, we let it be. We let it be. We let the love wash over us. We let, we let it be. over us we let we let it be I am the light of God the light of God surrounds us <laughs> the love of God enfolds us I am the love of God the power of God protects us I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is and all is well.